Oh yes, my straight dog family. Let's keep moving on because it's past that time for me to say good night, St. Kitts and Nevis. Good night to the entire Caribbean region. And I can say good night to the world because we are on the World Wide Web and we reach you in Africa. We reach you in Asia. We reach you in Europe. And we do reach and touch you all over North America. So I can not only say good night, I will say good morning. And I will also say good afternoon, because one of such greetings uh, will be applicable to the region in which you now find yourselves. And again, to the Federation and throughout the entire Caribbean region and wherever we are reaching you. We say greetings and welcome to another edition of Straight Talk for this good, good Thursday. And I want to say a very special welcome to our first-timers. We do have first-timers each program. And I thank all who continue to share the link. Please don't stop. Share the link far and wide. And for the first-timers, just to let you know that Straight Talk is a public service program. And we facilitate and promote free expression on all issues of natu- national interest, be they legal, be they environmental, be they technological, social, economic, and or political issues. On Straight Talk, we do have a forum to express yourselves freely. Let's, in the process, let us strive to get sent kids back to that enviable position be one of the freest countries in the entire world. I know it's a Himalayan task, but let's try, my Street Talk family, because on this program, we also try to raise the level of national consciousness. We try to raise the level of national discourse by alerting our people to their rights, to their responsibilities, and certainly to their obligations. My name is Ian Patches Lybert, and I give Almighty God thanks for blessing me with yet another opportunity uh, to join you in conversation, my Street Talk family, on yet another occasion. And I will continue to pledge to remain an untiring advocate of truthfulness, irrespective of the obstacles that come my way. I will remain an untiring advocate, as I always I'm reminded of the words of a favorite hymn of mine. It goes something like this. We are called to be God's prophets, speaking for the truth and right, standing firm for godly justice, bringing evil things to light. So let us seek the courage needed, our high calling to fulfill, that we may all know the blessing of doing, of the doing of God's will. So my Street Talk family, I want to assure you, especially our first-timers, that on this program, absolutely nothing is watered down. To make it more interesting, interesting, beg your pardon, and neither by omission nor exaggeration. A straight Talk is about, or is not about, is about truth. It's not about sensationalism. It's not about creating excitement especially at the expense of accuracy. We lean on the facts. I consider it my duty to always present the unvarnished truth, the plain truth, especially about governance in St. Kitts and Nevis. So let's join together once again all across our federation. We join together in the diaspora all around the world. And we say welcome again to another edition of Straight Talk. And let's almighty, thank Almighty God for helping us to understand oh how good and oh how pleasant it is 
the brethren to dwell together in unity. Let us hope and pray for the day when we all will sing his praise together. So welcome again, my Street Talk family, my people, and thanks to those who continue to share the link. For the first time, as Street Talk is a participative program. By that I mean we include your calls and your emails. And if you're so minded calling, the numbers are on your screen. 663-6672, that's the local number, or 646-829-6672. And let me wish you a happy Easter uh, whenever it comes, just in case I forget later. Let me wish you a, a happy Easter when it comes. Tomorrow is Good Friday. And tomorrow we go and we fly our kites, don't we? Yes, we go and we fly our kites over there with the PLP Massive over there at Black Rocks. Yes, over there at Black Rocks we go and fly our kites with the PLP Massive, as I said to you. We're going to have fun over the weekend. It's Good Friday and one of the pastimes, one of the, the traditions, I should say, on a Good Friday is we fly our kites. How many of you remember to go get your kites, especially uh, for your your young ones who, who uh, my trade dog family are? Uh, we go and, and, we fly and have, our kite, go get your kites. Have fun. Have your fun. Have fun, brother, I should say, my street dog family. And again, or before I even move any further, I should hail. My young brigade, I can never forget my young brigade, the Street Talk Junior Brigade, we call them. Young Dwayne, Tristan, Shama, Kevin, Hanley over there, Nevis, Young Ru Costa in South Carolina, Jamal in Anguilla, Travis and Trevon of Ponds Extension. And I believe your school has gone into Easter. Easter vacation, I, am I correct? I th think so. And ah, I must never forget the special lady in St. Louis. Louis, St. Louis. I was the queen in Texas over there. On a sad note, nonetheless, my straight dog family, when I was wrapping my program last Monday, Monday last, I learned of the passing of a stalwart matriarch from Pond Road there, uh, up East Bastia. Yes, Miss Johnny, we call her, of Sandown Road there in East Bastia. It was gone to the great beyond, and we want to extend condolences to her, her children and grandchildren, and in particular, uh, Mary, I do call her Maria, and, and uh, Stiba and June, my dear friend June and the entire family of children, our grandchildren, I should say, and just again to extend our condolences to to uh, the family, and I know that Vinetta as well. I, I was thinking it was uh, yes, it was the funeral, but Vinetta, as we call her, Vinetta Tacklin. Most people know her, her as Tackup. She uh, will be interred, I understand, next week, Wednesday. I trust I'll put that in my diary and remember it. But just to let you know, my street dog family, that death is a process. Death is a process. And it was Jimmy Cliff who said, who feels it knows it. And only who feels it knows it. So we can say anything to you. But I want to say that death is a process. As part of my, my observation in review, which is an integral part of the program, I, I want to, 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 without interruption, uh, refer to this song I've heard. I heard this song, I can't tell who, who done it. I can't tell the artist. I can't tell the name, right? But this is a song that seemed to be hitting all over St. Kitts and beyond. I should say all over the world. 
And I want to play this song uninterrupted tonight because it is such an apt description. It is such a vivid uh, story about what's happening here in St. Kitts. And it goes something like this, my straight talk family. Listen up. This country been run by a god of goats, the greediest of all time. They have all a self and none of the mentality. The chorus is me, me. Bunch of pigs and goats running this test day. And the latest deception and its reality really cause for alarm. They're the greediest of all time. It is plain to see the true gang and give a damn about you and me. Even big big supporters crying fall and shame But all these comrades, they're team the Labour Party name Don't business about that as long as they pack it fat Too bad who don't agree, the good them say it's all about me That's the cross Who is the nanny gate liar? Who does bring that top? Parent, men, Whose sole agenda is to make the self richer And the poor, poor RM They say I know that a greedy boat I beg you don't watch me stop being it Full instead just be grateful All the good them say it's all about me yeah. That's the slogan The big salary increase is just the latest injustice To be imposed on the people by these blundering misfits They selfish and greedy with no love for the needy Gobalicious and run race with the thing in your notice Disrespectful and pompous, arrogant and self-righteous These goats too brave and holding got no heart no soul They fed on their own mess with not a care for the rest They say it's all about me, me, me That's the good the mantra Who are the whole hog treating poor people like dog me, me, me. Who keep flying high in style living our sons here to die me, me, me. Who take the pepper drop up and kill off the peace me, me, me. Enough talking about lift and elevate Just words and promises but no relief Who lack in empathy, compassion, humility me who think that she will ever name it? It's a sustainable strategy. Here you go, them men, men, men. But what we are to these gums and vampires? Fake lies, he has these five first tenses. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied. The carrier comes in a grievous evil under the sun. Well, for it to the harm of its owners, lost to misfortune, so that their children have nothing to inherit. So let them carry on. God don't like ugly. Who playing, who fooling, who since June 2022? Men, men, men. Who do the big bait and switch divide the poor and the rich men? Who wrecking in the day while so many going hungry? Eh? Who are the state of the eye blood sucking parasites and bunch of termites? They did go deaf, man! Man! <laughs> you like that song? I love it. I don't know the artist. I don't know. As I said, I don't know the artist, but something about that song has just captured me, you know? I don't know if it captured you as well, but something about that song has captured me. Uh, they call it May May. Is it May May? Right? But that's all those are my observations for uh, tonight, my observations in review, uh, my Straight Talk family. And I'll move right into my thesis. And many have been calling me about the title of my thesis, which is Dr. July doesn't know his ACAS from his NALGO. That's the acronym ACAS and other acronym NALGO. <laughs> and you're pondering what the acronyms mean or what are the meanings of the acronym my street dog family but i listened to dr july in the national assembly on tuesday yes it was tuesday yes 
When he got to his feet to make a presentation under the other people, uh, the item and the other people listed as statement by ministers. And under this item on the other people, the member from St. Christopher 8 rose to present a report that pertained to an apparent internal review of the Citizenship by Investment Program, the CBI program, which was done over the past 19 months. And this is an excerpt of what he delivered, my street dog family. With your leave, Madam Speaker, I rise to speak on the section that deals with statement by ministers. And I rise to speak as minister responsible for citizenship by investment, national security, and immigration. Madam Speaker, I wish to make a statement to the nation in my capacity as Prime Minister and Minister with Responsibility of National Security, Immigration and Citizenship. Over the past few weeks, I have stated publicly that I will address the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, our beloved citizens, on the results of our administration's internal review of our citizenship by investment program. Yes, he has been saying that over the past few weeks that he will address the nation on the or some internal review that was carried out at the Citizenship by Investment Unit. And, but recall as well, my Street Dog family, that Prime Minister July has been dodging the passport question forever. Yes, forever, I would say. At least that's how it seemed, though he said this. He did, in fact, say this recently. I want to say that I will make a significant, um, I will speak on the CBI program within, I will say, within the next month to really share more in-depth information. As um, we came in, we had to do, of course, our audit and research and to extract the information and to see what we were really dealing with. And so I want to say to the caller that more information and a more comprehensive um, set of information will be coming very, very soon within the next month. So my straight talk, when he rose in the parliament, the whole country was anxious, I was, to hear this report of the review done over the last 19 or 20 months. The statement lasted approximately one hour. But the content, I believe, insulted the intelligence of every citizen and resident who listened. The presentation by the member from St. Christopher 8 thus reminded me of a British television comedy series called Yes Minister that was produced 40 years ago. All the episodes of Yes Minister were written by Anthony J. and Jonathan Lynn as well as its sequel, Yes, Yes Prime Minister was its sequel, which expanded on the earlier story that continued in the same common fictional context. Yes, it was fictional. So when I listened to 
Prime Minister July in the last parliament on Tuesday, I swore that I was looking at one of the episodes which appeared to be quite interesting to watch today, even after 40 years. And just to inform you, the principal actors in the television comedy series, Yes Minister, and it's part to Yes Prime Minister, the principal actors, Paul Eddington, played the Right Honorable James Hacker, a member of Parliament, and Nigel Hawthorne acted as Sir Humphrey, the permanent secretary. And one of the themes of the television series was the manipulation of the seemingly not very intelligent Minister Hacker by some very deceitful civil servants. And my straight talk family, my friend Big Lies, who never uses diplomatic language referred to two such local civil servants whom he named and referred to them in this way. My friend Big Lies said this. Some people like Thelma Gilbert, Naima Hazal did not believe or think that I was worthy of the name advisor. Hope you won't give me a letter to send me appointed. No advisor in the MNI. Letter N. But me get a contract to send me advisor. And let me tell you something. That is exactly how the government is running, you know. Thelma and Miss Hazal are them are running the government. And I got a problem with that. Thelma Richards and Nahima Razal Hazal, whatever the name be, no no one government. They don't know one government because the first thing they don't like people. Me don't work so hard who put Dr. Drew in the office. For him now to be suffering because of them their impotence and incompetence. Them they I want the country into the ground. And the thing will hurt me when it comes to running a government, they ain't know the ass from the elbow. Oops. What? But truth be told, when one assesses the performance of the Dr. July for the last 19 months, in the context of what my friend Big Lie said, Drew has proven time and time again that he doesn't know his ass from his elbow using Big Lie's language. But I am cautious to use such language, the language of Big Lies, as the Cambridge Dictionary definition of not knowing your ass from your elbow considers such language as being offensive. Neither do I want to come across as being rude, but everyone, including myself, is of the view that when Dr. July speaks, he makes one wonder if he, he, if he, if he is daft and or unable to understand some very simple things. For those who I may have confused by using the acronyms ACAS and NALGO. ACAS is the Advisory Conciliation and Arbitration Service, an organization established to mediate in industrial disputes. Contemporary viewers, present viewers of the television comedy, Yes Minister, would be more familiar with the acronym ACAS. And I invite you to find that that, that uh, 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 comedy series. Nalgo, on the other hand, was the National and Local Government Officers Association, a trade union for workers in local government primarily, and one which might well have been involved in, the, in disputes with ACAS. It was probably less well known than ACAS, but viewers would probably have recognized it even if they did not know what the acronym stood for. So when I say that Dr. July doesn't know his acres from his nalgo, like Sir Humphrey in the television comedy series, I am just playing on words to suggest that Prime Minister July does not really understand very much about his job, 
even after 19 months. So just like my friend Big Lies and just like Sir Humphrey, the expression being imitated is he doesn't know his ass from his elbow, like Big Lies said. But Straight Talk would say July is overwhelmed by his job as Prime Minister. So he is in a very confused state. But he has so many special advisors to, to not know what to do or who to ask for help. The low productivity within the cabinet of ministers has had significant consequences for this government and all of us as citizens and residents. July and his cabinet raised their salaries by 35%, in some cases $7,000 and more per month. But the minimum wage, they raised that by a mere 19 or 18 or 19 percent of $70 or $70, much to great public dissatisfaction, my straight dog family, much to great public dissatisfaction, I may add. And people in St. Kitts are bawling. People are crying out, my straight dog family. I went to the supermarket and a lady told me, my straight dog family, she can't afford to buy this salt fish. And it's Good Friday. You know, we have our salt fish and Johnny cake and dumpling. But hear this, I saw the mackerel went down to $15.99. Hmm. I thought it was a mistake. But if you were there, you should have grabbed it. Because it came down by 7 or $8. Imagine July is having my straight dog family. A that day in a couple of weeks. But there's no vat on food. So what is this vat day all about? But much to great public dissatisfaction, St. Kitts, according to the former advisor, and many agree, is in a mess. Right now I believe the Prime Minister listen to me, me an advisor anymore. You don't fire me. But listen to me carefully. Right now you need a, a, a cabinet you shuffle. Everything needs to shuffle up. Because let me tell you something. My experience around the 68 square miles, my experience in Nevis is that everybody ball, the labor people ball more than everybody else. Things not going well. Things not going well. But all I'm saying, things not going well. If the labor people are born more than the ordinary people, something is wrong. If the ordinary people is not growing as much as the labor people, something is wrong. We're not, we're, we're not the good. Saying his name is, is in a mess. The country is not going in any direction. We're spinning like top in mud. We're spinning like top in mud. And all kudos to, to Big Lies. He, he speaks the truth. We have something in common. We don't tell lies. We speak the truth. But St. Kitts is in a mess. I concur with my brother and friend. Poor productivity has led to dissatisfaction among the public. When ministers are not productive, it affects the overall functioning of any government and its ability to deliver services efficiently, my street dog family. When we look at the, 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 the law or the economic impact of the CBI and low productivity that continues to make life more difficult or, and even it's difficult for economic growth across the Federation. No wonder July said we are going to face rough times. Failing productivity growth has been observed in St. Kitts Nevis for a long time. My street dog family, the lingering effects of the COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated this problem, has made it worse, my straight dog family. 
consensus, consensus building and political stability. My sweet dog family is another factor. A cabinet with low productivity like this cabinet makes everybody struggle. And even there, they're struggling to make, maintain consensus as to the reason why they were elected. Negative events or economic problems continue to damage Prime Minister July's standing, making his grip on power, my straight dog family, precarious, to say the least. Socioeconomic development. In the case of St. Kitts Davis, quack personnel in public organizations have adversely affected socioeconomic development in this country, my street dog family. They don't know what they're doing. Prime Minister July speaks so irresponsible as a medical doctor and continues to play what I call dundudic politics, especially when he speaks in such a callous manner like this. My straight talk family about the COVID-19 pandemic. In August 2022, and I will say it was August 7th, 2022, a Sunday night at our Marriott Hotel where that decision was made with all of the relevant um, persons in the room, including the CMO and others. I will say it again, the lifting of all COVID-related travel restrictions in August 2022 sparked a strong rebound in the tourism sector and across the economy, end of quote. IMF stating it. Remember, Madam Speaker, I said to the people that a travesty had been committed when the then administration refused fully by removing the unnecessary restrictions. Had we not done that, the economy would have lagged even more. And because we took so long to open up the country and remove the restrictions, the economy, the economy lagged. Reports will show that the St. Kitts Nevis economy recovered almost the slowest in the OECS as a result of this. All of the other countries had removed their restrictions and they were open for business to the point where some countries had higher numbers in terms of their tourism numbers than even 2019, Madam Speaker. However, St. Kitts and Nevis lagged because the previous administration refused to open up the country and we are still feeling some of the effect from that. Had the economy been opened up as others, or at the same time as others, we would have recovered since by the end of 2023. My Shredog family, every time I listen to Dr. July, who is a medical doctor, And he, he, he speaks in such a callous manner about the lifting of the COVID restrictions. And it is such an affront to the nurses and the doctors, the chief medical officer, for example, uh, uh, Dr. Hazel Laws, and uh, the chief of staff of the hospital, uh, uh, Cameron Wilkinson, the name of people, and all the 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 front 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 office people, I call them. I don't think that's the right word. But they're the ones who had to tackle, confront a pandemic, a core a coronavirus induced pandemic, never seen in this country or in the world, as a matter of fact, in over a century. And you must ask yourselves, you must ask ourselves if Dr. Ju Lai 
is a will that Latin America and the Caribbean had the highest number of reported COVID-19 deaths of any region in the world. And we can look at the statistics or the data, whatever you want to call it, up to December 2023, 1.8 million persons died in this region. Even though this region in which we live makes 0.4% of the world's population, yet we reported 30% or more of deaths in the world. And look at the statistics, dear, my straight dog family. And as petitions and divisions, we must say kudos to the, 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 the Health Emergency Operations Committee that guided us through this, this, uh, this pandemic, my straight dog family. And look at St. Kitts and Nevis. At the bottom, the lowest amounts of death 46 deaths too many. Yes, Barbados opened up. We agree. And they opened up early. Look at them. 563 deaths, my straight dog family. Or 593. Bahamas opened up. And look at Bahamas. 644 deaths. St. Lucia opened pretty early. Look at that. 410 deaths, my straight dog family. Grenada, 236 deaths. Antigua and Barbuda, 146. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, 124. And the only two countries in the region under 100, Dominica, 74, and St. Kitts Davis, 46 too many. So when Drew is talking his nonsense, about opening up too late. We had a life first strategy. Life first strategy. But he wanted, yes, to sell his, his, uh, his uh, what they call his kits, his, uh, his uh, kits. Forgot the name of the kits. He wanted to sell them to the country. That's why he's bitter about that opening up. And my straight dog family, all July talks about is the Bretton Woods institutions. Why doesn't he get out of the IMF box and look at the sources like ECLAC or ECLAC and read Social Panorama of Latin America 2021 published in Santiago, Chile in 2022. And at pages 17 to 21, he will find a summary that states, and I quote, the effects of the pandemic amount to the most serious economic contraction of the past 120 years experienced by the region and a steady deterioration of the social development process. The ECLAC PAHO COVID-19 report states that, and I quote as well, the prolongation of the health crisis has exposed and deepened the region's historical gap and it has underscored the urgency of strengthening the welfare state and implementing universal redistribu redistributive and solidarity-based policies with the right approach to ensure that no one is left behind. But what has you done? They have messed up everything, my straight dog family. Everything they have messed up in St. Kitts and Nevis. St. Kitts and Nevis, as we said, is in a mess. A real, real mess. My straight dog family. And my friend Big Lies summarized it well. He summarized it well, my straight dog family. When he said this, he summarized, and you heard what we said about the the ECLAC report. But what he did, instead of, of strengthening the welfare of the poor and most vulnerable in St. Kitts Nevis, he did this. Stay down here. 
trying to change everything. They understand politics. They don't understand the bread and butter politics. Pop change, pop change to the left, peace change to elevate, step change to this, and all. And you're busy trying to change names of some institution and not making sure that the people are satisfied. The people are not satisfied. Something was supposed to happen the other day. We changed in a back, back, back. Everything back from bragger than bragger than bragger than bum. No planning. No foresight. Making the government look bad. No planning. No foresight. That's coming from their former advisor. But it is his lies, my street dog family, that take the cake at all times. As he promised to provide the CBI data, and he lied again, lied again, my street dog family. Recall that the third Prime Minister, Timothy Harris, provided this data in 2018. He provided this data for the whole country to hear. Last time I had reported that on the, the program we were advised by the Canadian Bank Note, who manages our passport, that 10,777 had been issued at the end of December 2015. And we have the revised information from the banknote which says that up to 2015, really, the figure should have been 12,496. And the total number of CBI passport now issued stands at 16,544. And my straight talk family, July, after a deep dive, and a 19-month-long internal review only provided this nonsense of a report, my straight dog family, in the House of Assembly, or the National Assembly, as we call it. It's just so sad. Example, the CBI program, we know that one of the major projects that was approved under the previous administration was a prison project, Madam Speaker. A prison was approved. And 5,500 citizenships, shears. or shears rather, Madam Speaker, shears, as it was called then, shears, was used for that project. It means, therefore, that 5,500 main applicants if they were to invest in the prison project, can apply for citizenship. And if they would have passed the due diligence and other screening procedures, can access our passport. But Madam Speaker, that is just the main applicants. If you have a family of four, that is a single share. With a family of four, that's four times 5,500 passports, Madam Speaker. Do a calculation. I'm asking the people of this country. I've been asked for the numbers. And even members from the other side who know very well what the numbers are. They have asked that the numbers be given, but we took a deep dive, and now we are ready to say what happened with that project. So if you were to multiply 5,500 by 4, and the mathematicians are here, I am sure you'll get well over what? 20,000? Yes. 20,000. What is the population of St. Kitts and Nevis, Madam Speaker? About 50, 55,000 on a good day. And just on one project, Madam Speaker, a prison project, the previous administration allowed access to a number of passports, which is about half 
of the population of St. Kitts and Nevis. My Street Talk family, all the country asks July 4 is the number of passports that have been sold under the CBI. Young Lashon Dixon asks this question. To date, he has not responded. Good morning, Lashon Dixon, St. Kitts News Observer. Um, Mr. Prime Minister, when you first got elected, you promised that your admin would implement principles of good governance, integrity in public life, transparency and accountability. Um, since November, the Observer has been asking about the number of passports issued to date under the CBI program and the certificates of registration you signed since taking office. Um, we have been informed that over 30,000 passports have been sold under the CPI in total. Um, this will concern um, the population of 55,000 here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Um, what is your response to these claims? And to date, my straight talk family, no response from the Prime Minister, even after this long, deep dive and a 19 month internal review. What a man, my street dog family. July also spoke about good governance and the IPL. My street dog family. You remember he spoke about that as well? For the first time, um, Abel, people, politicians in St. Kitts and Nevis, they have to file what their assets are and their liabilities with the Integrity Commission. And those who don't file might have to resign their positions or they would have to face the court of law and i will finally say that that is how serious we are to the point we are saying it's a navy is the most compliant country in the caribbean when it comes to the issues of good governance and integrity in public life and in short order we and my short talk family it is rather ironic that this man is so serious and some will face the court of law. But how serious is he? Because the chairman of his transition team and the current chairman of the Board of Governors of the Citizenship by Investment Program is this the same chairman who failed to declare his assets and liabilities and was taken before the court? Yes, before the magistrate's court, you see, on the 26th of February, my straight dog family, the case number SKBMCR2024-0046, the Director of Public Prosecutions versus Sylvester Anthony, defendant, my straight dog family. How serious is Drew and his team? about integrity in public life. As I said some time ago, my stray dog family, when a fish stinks, it stinks from the head. But my stray dog family, we can only come to one conclusion tonight. My friend Big Lies would say that July doesn't know his ass from his elbow. But as your host, I can't say that. I won't say that. I will say that July doesn't know his acres from his nalgo. That's my story tonight, my straight talk family, and I am not going to change it. But I'll open the lines and entertain your calls and entertain your emails. And if you're so minded to call, as I said, the numbers are on your screen and the local number is 663-6672. If you're calling that number from outside of St. Kitts, of course, you use the area code 869. And the overseas line is 646-829-6672. There are those of you who like what I call the cloak of anonymity. So we give you access via our email platform. And that address is straighttalkpatches at 
gmail.com. That's one word. It's also on your screen. Straight talk patches at gmail.com. It's 902, and I will open the lines momentarily. I always like to employ you nonetheless. When I do so, is to respect others. And of course, to achieve that, you must first respect yourselves. Let us try to be fair to all concern, and let us uh, try to build goodwill and better friendships. Let us, my straight dog family, in, in saying and doing those things, let us uh, ensure that we, 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 we strive to build a kinder, gentler St. Kitts and Nevis. With that said, I go to the lines and say... Uh, Good night, Mr. Patel. Good night, my brother. You're uh, batting number one. Hold on, Mr. Patel. Mr. Patel, I have yeah. something wonderful to tell you. Please, say it in, tell me in two minutes, can you? Okay. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm coming to you, Mr. Patel. Please. Psalm 62. I am reading from verse 9. I hear this. Surely men of low degree are vanity. Men of high degree are liars. You hear that? Psalm 62. Mm -hmm. Men are, are of high degree are liars. To be weighed in the balancing, they are all together like of themselves, them of vanity. Number 10, they trust not in the trust in the in the oppression and become not in vain of robbery. If the if the wicked increase. Set not your heart on it. Here, here, number 11. God spoke once, spoke twice. He have, have I heard that no, I heard, I am, heard, I the, heard that this, okay. that, God is saying, heard that the power belongs to God. Yes, thank Let you. Let me read it again. I heard. God have speak once, twice. I am heard, had, I have, have I heard this, that power belongs to God. Okay, okay, my brother. Thanks a lot uh, for your spiritual intervention and i want to wish you a happy easter when it comes uh if, yes, if, you, if you fly your kites be careful okay, yeah. okay you don't fly kites okay so have yourself a okay have yourself a wonderful easter weekend yeah. thanks a lot always thanks i thank you always uh, rather for your spiritual intervention the bible man uh he gets in each time uh, very early, and I'm happy, as I said, uh, for that spiritual intervention. It's now six minutes after the nine o'clock hour, my street dog family, and 
our thesis tonight. We have titled uh, Drew Lai doesn't understand his ikas from his nalgo. And I explained that for those uh, who were here earlier. I'll, I'll explain it before uh, 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 we, we leave again. Oh Lord, man, Mark Brantley reads this email. Have a heart, man. Why are you so spiteful and vindictive to the people of Nevis, whom you always claim you have so much, uh, you love so much, beg your pardon. It's a dictatorial, repressive, tyrannical, unconscionable and unconstitutional uh, it, uh, what you've done is uh, what you have done with rather regards to the last appointment you made to the Nevis Integrity Commission if the opposition members in Nevis cannot agree as to which one became the leader wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be more democratic for you to ask the Deputy Governor General to make the second appointment to the Commission rather than you. You are too wrapped up in these corrupt practices. You have the President of the NIA Assembly, a lawyer, working in your private law, law firm. You nominated the lady Senator as the opposition member and Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly. She too works for your law firm. And it is obvious that you have full control over them. Where is the transparency? Remember you declared to the world that Douglas had the Federation galloping into a dictatorship when he refused to table the motion of no confidence. Now you have proven yourself to be a dictator ten times worse than Douglas. Be reminded that PD is fast. Don't worry. Read this email. And my Shred Talk family, if you have just joined me, the lines are open. I'm discussing my thesis for tonight, which I've titled July Doesn't Understand Icas or Nalgo by Straight Talk family. And I looked, in fact, at the presentation in the cabinet, uh, my street dog family, I looked at the assembly rather, not the cabinet, uh, uh, forgive me for that. And when I looked at the assembly on Tuesday, and everyone, every single one, uh, awaited this statement from July. Was I said, did I say, didn't understand? I, I should be the July doesn't know his acres from his Nalgo. And when we listen to July in the National Assembly, yes, on Tuesday, he got to his feet under statement by ministers to make a presentation as it relates to the deep dive, according to him, he took into the CBI operations by Straight Dog Family. And we thought when he took this deep dive, he would come up with something that we could understand. But he came up with absolutely nothing. He said this, remember. With your leave, Madam Speaker, I rise to speak on the section that deals with statement by ministers. And I rise to speak as minister responsible for citizenship by investment national security and immigration madam speaker i wish to make a statement to the nation in my capacity as prime minister 
and Minister with Responsibility of National Security, Immigration and Citizenship. Over the past few weeks, I have stated publicly that I will address the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, our beloved citizens, on the results of our administration's internal review of our citizenship by investment program. And yes, my sweet of family, under this item, he rose and promised from the onset to present this report that pertained to I see an apparent internal review of the CBI program which was done over the past 19 months. Recall as well that he's been dodging, dodging a simple question. Very simple question asked so many times by so many different reporters. I'm sure you remember this question, my straight dog family. Good morning, Russia and Nixon, St. Kitts News Observer. Um, Mr. Prime Minister, when you first got elected, you promised that your admin would implement principles of good governance, integrity in public life, transparency, and accountability. Um, since November, the Observer has been asking about the number of passports issued to date under the CBI program and the certificates of registration you signed since taking office. Um, we have been informed that over 30,000 passports have been sold under the CBI in total. Um, this will concern um, the population of 55,000 here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Um, what is your response to these claims? To date, he has had no response, my straight talk family. 914. Uh, we're going to go to the line. Thank this caller for holding. Caller, you're live. Hello, caller. Yes. Good evening, Patrick. How are thou, my dear brother? Good evening. Oh, thou art great, man. Thou art great. Mm. As is, you know, this is Holy Week, eh? Yes, it is. And the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, he rode on the back of an ass. Well, you are the host. I know you don't want to use the word ass, but from the Bible, he told us that Jesus rode on the back of an ass. That was a nice ass. It's a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But the one that the one that Big Life spoke about uh. is a vagabond donkey. Uh. Now listen here now. This is Holy Week. You mean to say every media platform, July, find yourself sending somebody there to tell lies. Spread more lies every day, every every day in the week. And the thing he think that we don't know no better. What do you mean to tell us? Nineteen months since lying July India. And he don't want he never answer one journalist to the question they ask him, How many passports have you signed on to since you India? But he keep reversing, going for driving the car forward looking back. Talking about how many passports was 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 sold to the Chinese them for a prison from the farm administration. Even an animal, the most sensible animal can see that is something wrong. That man July from Monkey Hill did with the passport them that he he signed off since India. What he don't want to say because he know if he tell the truth about them thing there. What gonna happen to him? What gonna happen to him is that he own people in the hall can turn against him in parliament. Because the people them who voted for Labour out here, they are already turn against him. Because they find out what he's doing with the country. He mash up the country. He mash up the country and he 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 he, he pushing the gate of the the IMF to go in there with us. Because of how he don't know how to run the country. He ain't, he don't know how to spend money. All he know is to put money where he ain't supposed to put it. And then got the ignorant, ignorant partner out there up there coming talking about he gonna share my name some people who never friendly with the treasury. 
That is what I want to say more than me two minutes, but I'll come back. Good night, Paul and Samuel, and everybody who listening straight talk. Word of straight talk, I will hear you tonight. I'll come back, Patrick. Thank you so long. Thank you for your intervention. And it, it, it's got to be something he's hiding. I mean, what or not uh, is Drew hiding about these passport uh, numbers? Everyone agrees that that he should release the numbers. He must know how many certificate or certificates of, of registration he signed. He has to sign them. And every single month, the Canadian bank note that, that uh, produce our passports, produce and manage our passports, I think they manage all the passports in, in the, for the CARICOM countries, in the CARICOM region. They send a report every single month uh, with the passport. He had to deactivate the passport uh, some time ago. You, you heard him speak about these Chinese. He don't do it here. The, 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 the permanent secretary had to contact the Can- Canadian banknote to deactivate the passport and every passport. So what is this man hiding is, <laughs> is baffling. But... If you can't trust them on small things, because you just mentioned Garth Lucifer Wilkin, and you can't trust him on small things, how can you trust him on big things, my straight dog family? We haven't spoken about the water tonight and the salination because I wanted to spend some time on the CBI nonsense, the CBI uh, uh, misrepresentation by Jew, my straight dog family. He continues all the time to misrepresent uh, the country. And we will find him out. What's in the dark must come to light. For sure. What's in the dark, my straight dog family, must come to light. You know? He, there's so many people have, have asked about this CBI program. We can play all the questions from the reporters that asked about the CBI program tonight, and no one, no answer has come forth from this man. And you wonder why. What is he hiding, my street dog family? Remember, he was asked this question again. By the big GL. We know that about 5,000 citizenships were offered for the prison project. At any given time, I would say that one would have to see what does that result in, in terms of the numbers. It does not mean that one mean one. It means that one can mean based on how much family members you might have. And that is why at any given time that the best number is achieved from there. So those were used and mostly done for the project and they're still going through so you might think it's five thousand so it's five thousand it may not be that you need to know how many family members per main applicant that is how it is. and therefore that number is a number to be specific that you would have to get from there but most of those went through the system already so in terms of the numbers those are the numbers what is the number most of them had gone through how much gone through up to today i can't give you that specific number you see you would have that specific number as well but you have an overall of the numbers that were offered up and how much may have been used. So that is where that is in terms of the numbers. My sure dog family, the statement he made in Parliament lasted approximately one hour. But what was contained in the statement insulted the intelligence of every citizen and resident who listen. The presentation by the Prime Minister July, the member from St. Christopher 8, as I said before, reminded me of a British television comedy series called Yes Minister that was produced some 40 years ago by Straight Talk Family. And all the episodes of Yes Minister written by Tony J. and Donaldson Lynn, as well as its sequel, sequel, Yes, Prime Minister was the sequel, 
which expanded on the earlier story that continued in the same common fictional context. And this was a fictional uh, a, a story, a story of fiction. But when I listened to Prime Minister July in the last parliament on Tuesday, I swore that I was looking at one of the episodes which appeared to be quite interesting to watch today. My street dog family, someone played the right Honorable James Hacker, a member of parliament in the UK parliament, Eddington. And Hawthorne acted as Sir Humphrey Appleby, the permanent secretary. And one of the themes of the television series was the manipulation of the seemingly not very intelligent Minister Hacker by some deceitful civil servants. And there are many deceitful civil servants in the system today, my street dog family. And some were called out. Some were called out, my street dog family, by the former advisor who said this. Some people, like Telma Gilbert, Naima Hazan, did not believe or think that I was worthy of the name advisor. How oh, you won't give me a letter to send me appointed? No advisor in the name of Letter end. But me get a contract to send me advisor. And let me tell you something. That is exactly how the government is running, you know. Telma and Miss Hazal at them are running the government. And I got a problem with that. Telma Richards and Nakima Razal, Hazal, whatever the name be, no, no one government. They don't know one government because the first thing, they don't like people. Me don't work so hard who put Dr. Drew in office for him now to be suffering because of them their impotence and incompetence. Them they I want the country into the ground. And the thing will hurt me when it comes to running a government, they ain't know the ass from the elbow. And my straight dog family, most people are saying the same thing about July. When his performance is assessed, my straight dog family. But what we are saying, we are playing with the words here. And though we are saying the same thing, on straight dog, we say, that July doesn't know his acres from his Nalgo. <laughs> like Sir Humphrey in the television comedy series. I'm just playing on words to suggest that Prime Minister July does not know, does not understand anything about the job he has been assigned to do by the people. And just like my friend Big Lice, unlike Sir Humphrey, the expression being imitated when I say he doesn't know his acres from his nalgo is that he doesn't know his ass from his elbow. July is overwhelmed by his job as Prime Minister. He's confused. He has so many advisors to not know what to do or who to ask for help. Yes, my street dog family, he doesn't know his acres from his alcohol. When I question labor people about Dwyer or his weekly commentary, read this email. Some say, girl, I don't want to see nor hear that man. Others say I hear him, but I don't pay attention to him. Another set said, Dwyer just loved to hear himself on the ear. He has pro pro proposed so many changes to, the, to Dr. Drew, and all go unnoticed. Because the entire cabinet knows that 
Maguire is a crooked, 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 crooked man. He is not to be trusted in any way. Those are what labor rights say to me about him. So if Dr. Drew, whom he fought so hard for in the most disrespectful manner to take away the leadership of the Labour Party from Douglas and Drew, just keep ignoring everything I say. Why should anyone else pay him attention? He is undeserving of listening to another comrade said that Dwyer or Dwyer's problem was to get Douglas out at all costs. And he fought like hell with Sam and others to get rid of Drew. But he knew very well Drew wasn't ready to be no prime minister. Therefore he just has to continue his mission of deceptive praises for Jew, even though in some of his weekly commentaries is Jew he really attacking indirectly, not Conris. But you see, Dwyer's smart. He don't want to find himself in the same trap as Mark, who prays Harris up to the high heaven as the best prime minister the Federation has ever had, then turned around and made himself a real fool, saying Harris was no good. I had to concur with the person, Mr. Libel, reads this email. This other email reads, July, the minister of taking St. Kitts Navis to hell. The entire federation on the labor is sinking. I am home practicing how long I can hold my mouth as a Newtowner. Now they were talking about health care in parliament and their main focus on the newborn. But what about the violence happening in St. Kitts? That should be a part of health care also. Tim have done, has done much more for this country than Drew and his Labour Party could ever dream of when they want to speak about the least productive government. Tell the Labour ministers to look in to the mirror. Congress needs to hush and humble his ass and moist, moisturize his, 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 uh, his ashy skin. He, he no pregnant, but he always white. With the amount of lies you told in Parliament, he should be in jail. How do we deal with unproductivity? That's a question the Labour government should be asking themselves because each and every one of them clueless reads this email. Thank you. Good night, Mr. Leiber. I have to take time ever so often to thank you for this program. I must continue to rem remind you how much we appreciate your dedication to the people of the Federation. I wish you a happy and blessed Easter. Read this email. Thank you as well, and I wish you the same. My straight talk family. I go back to the lines. Call your live. Hello, call. Yeah, but it's mm -hmm. a snake. A snake is a smart serpent. If a snake wants to go eat a cat or a rat, and there is a dot wood, and you have a grass pasture. The snake gonna go in the grass, which is much difficult for it to pass. And the reason for it, why the snake gonna do that? Because you know, in the grass, nobody could trace the track. But on the dot, people could tr trace the track. How we wiggle and waggle and waggle, and you, you know, well then a, a snake went up there. That is how the snake in Nevis is doing. The, the people of Nevis, you gonna tell me? The people of Nevis are balling, put things up here rough and tough. And the snake take Nevis money and give it to a vagabond, a scamp, who come here and get out there to buy with that. And that's why the snake in parliament, he cannot get up and, and oppose the ranking them with Julie and his cabinet and the cabal them doing to the country. Because he is part of them. He's sitting around the table with them eating, and he in bed with them, with, 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 the, with, with the business of the country. If we had to oppose, because anyhow we oppose, he can't go back and tell Julie round the back door he wants some money for the arm, um, what they call it, the fear here. He wants some of the fear He can't go back and tell him nothing about the money. So he, 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 he was in him, 
he 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 boy it in the tongue. He bring the bitter with the sweet. But the bunny in the conscience, but nearest people up there suffering and bawling. And he come in talking on the radio about we money for a fix hospital and, and they got some technical setback and all the kind of foolish shit he tell the nearest people. Now down here in Parliament, he's supposed to be over there between Sean, Timothy, you swear them. Well, if he's sitting down close to them out there, he mind ain't over there with them. He mind with you them. And I am calling everybody, both PAM, Labour, PLP, nobody. It's time to do what those people up in Germany and France and all those people are doing. As soon as the government up there doing his stupidness, which is wrong, they're gone on the street and they're showing them, hey, we're not tolerating that. And you have to come out. And they're not going to stop until like, they succeed with, with their aim. People do not keep no company with a snake. Because you are see what you're doing. You know, knock out bread out of one of them hands. And you can't even give them a piece of cracker. Keep from here. He's a dangerous man. Just like them they who tried to get down Timothy and PLP out of office. They shame now to call him and blame them. So they're trying to blame indirectly at Joe. But yeah, indirectly and calling other people name. Them they're not to be trusted. Them they're hypocrite and crook. And even the devil and all wouldn't want to see them dead on in hell. But just thank you for your two minutes. <laughs> thank you, my brother, uh, for your contribution. Uh, then if you are asking me to replay uh, this this song, I, I don't know who 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 uh, who wrote the song, but the content of the song is uh, really thought provoking, and I must say. Factual, my straight dog family. It went some go something like this. This country be run by a bad and good stinging yes of all time. They have a hollow self and none of the mentality. The chorus is made, made. Bunch of pigs and goats running this test day. And the latest deception and the reality really cause for alarm. They degree the greediest of all time, it is plain to see the two gang and give a damn about you and me. Even big big supporters crying fall and shame. But all these comrades, they're team the Labour Party name. Don't business about that as long as they fuck it fight too bad. You don't agree, the good them say it's all about me. Hey, that's the chorus. Who is the nanny gay liar? Who touched me doctor? Hey, man, man, man. Whose sole agenda is to make the self richer And the poor poor liar eh? They say I know that I greedy But I beg you don't watch me stop the Full instead just be grateful All the good them say it's all about me hey, That's the slogan The big salary increases just the latest injustice to be Imposed on the people by these grandering misfits They selfish and greedy with no love for the needy Dabalicious and run race with the thing you got no taste Disrespectful and pompous, arrogant and self-righteous These votes too brave and bold ain't got no heart, no soul They fed on their own mess with not a care for the rest They say it's all about me, me, me That's the good, the mantra what the world have treated poor people like dog men? Who keep flying and you start living our sons here to die? Man. Who take the pep out of the pop and he laugh the peace? Now talking about it, don't elevate just words and promises, but no relief. Who lack in empathy, compassion, humility? Man. Who think that shame labor is living? It's a sustainable strategy. Here they both them men, men, men. But who be unto these guns and vampires? Fake lies, he has this 
five first senses. Whoever loves money never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied. The day will come. First thing I dream of sleep and under the sun. Well, according to the arm of the soul, has lost to his fortune. So that the children have nothing to inherit. So let them carry on. God don't like oh please. Who play, who fooling, who since June 2022, man, man, man. Who do the big pens and switch the vine, the poor and the rich, man, 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 man. Who wrecking in the day while so many going hungry, man. Who are the stress of the high blood sucking parasite of unshattered minds? Very good, damn man. May for my special request, my street dog family. And I forgot to mention as well that this is also a paid program being streamed on stream live on Massive Vibes Radio. All they have to do is send the links, uh, or, or sorry, uh, just to street dog on Amazon or Alexa devices and ask uh, for, for skills and. Just ask for Massive Vibes Radio and then you're right on Massive Vibes Radio, my straight talk family. And those who may have just joined me again, our theme we are looking at tonight is I titled uh, my straight talk family, I titled my theme uh, uh, tonight that July doesn't know his acres from his nago, and I I explained the acronyms much earlier, and I'll do so again for those who may have just joined me. In, in fact, I, I used it because I was cautious about the, the meaning. But for those who I may have confused by using the acronyms ACAS and NALGO, I explained that ACAS is the Advisory Conciliation and Arbitration Service, an organization established in the UK to mediate in industrial disputes. Contemporary viewers of the television comedy series, Yes Minister, would be familiar with the acronym. Analgo, on the other hand, was the National and Local Government Officers Association, a trade union for workers in local government, primarily. And one which might well have been involved in disputes involving ACAS. It was probably less well known than ACAS, but viewers, viewers would probably have recognized it, even if they do not know what the acronym still stood for. So when I say that July doesn't know his ACAS from his Nalgo, like Sir Humphrey, who, who, who played the part a permanent secretary in the television comedy series. I, I'm, I, I'm just playing, like Sir Humphrey, just playing on words to suggest that Prime Minister July does not understand very much about his job. And just like my friend Big Lies, my straight dog family, just like my friend uh, <clears throat> Big Lies, He's overwhelmed and so Humphrey the expression being imitated is he doesn't really know this so my sweet dog family. Did not believe or think that I was worthy of the name Ajaisa. Oh, you won't give me a letter to send me appointed. No advisor in name and Letter end. But me get a contract to send me advisor. And let me tell you something. That is exactly how the government is running, you know. Telma and Miss Hazal are them the government. And I'm going to come with that. Telma Richards 
Anahima, Razal, Hazal, whatever the name be, no no one government. They don't know one government because the first thing they don't like people. Men don't work so hard who put Dr. Drew in office for him now to be suffering because of them their impotence and incompetence. Them they I want the country into the ground. And the thing will hurt me when it comes to running a government, they ain't know the ass from the elbow. And my shows family. July is overwhelmed by his job as Prime Minister. So he comes across as being very confused or in a very confused state at all times. Although he has so many advisors, he ought to know what to do. Or to ask for help. The low productivity within the cabinet of ministers has had significant negative consequences for this government and straight dog family. And the citizens and residents of St. Kitts and Nevis. July and his cabinet raised their salaries by 35% in some cases. by $7,000 or more per month. But the minimum wage of the poor, hard-working people, my straight dog family, he raised by $70, 19%, to create public satisfaction, dissatisfaction. Let's go back to the lines. And I've heard and heard from Nabu for some time. I hope he's all right. Uh, but let's go to the lines. Uh, <laughs> call you live. Hello. Yeah, Mr. Live, man. How you doing tonight, man? I am peaceful, my brother. Yourself? I thought yeah, pretty you, I good, thought pretty you were good. just giving me the goat. Go. You say, did you laugh? Huh? I said, me. <laughs> oh, me. <laughs> me. No, me. <laughs> How are you, my brother? Happy Easter to you. Yeah, how you doing tonight, man? I am peaceful. I'm peaceful. Yourself? Yeah, pretty good. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I'm much more relaxed tonight, man. I got some good news of the, got some good news from the camp today. You know. Uh huh. You know, so I just want to say I feel much better this evening, man. Uh huh. You got some. You know, news people who've been listening. Yeah, some people who've been listening closely, they will know what I'm talking about. Okay. You know, just as well as it's good to call out wrong when you see wrong done and corruption, you know, and when people strain, it's good to give them an acknowledgement when they're doing well. And I just want to say that generally tonight. I'm not quite following Yeah, man, patches, I'm not, man. I'm not quite following you, though. I normally do. No, nah, you're not, you're not going to. Yeah, you know, you know when people talking in parables, yeah. that, that's like talking in parables. But why are you talking in parables? That's not you. Huh? <laughs> now, nah, man, I'm talking in parables like that. Only the smart people are going to figure out what I'm saying. Okay, okay. So I'm. Um, and, and and I know I know you got some I'm, and I know you got some smart, intelligent listeners out there. Okay, I'm not in that group, unfortunately. <laughs> But this is straight yeah, talk. Well, some, this some, is straight talk. Some people call it. some people call it some people call it doctor, so call it what? But anyway, man, <laughs> some people call it doctor Ian Patches Liber. So you know, <laughs> we, you know that's a that's a well, big I, title you, you get I, from some people, man. I hope I'm not a slow student tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and some and some people want some people might be calling for you to come back. <laughs> what 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 it's hard work, you know, it's hard work, you know, it's good. Yeah, 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 very much, man. But when you've been, but when people doing wrong, you call them up, or just as well when they're doing good, okay. you acknowledge them and big them up. Yes, that's how the world should be going. You know what I'm saying? That is true. It's some, sometimes, sometimes I wonder, man, is there anything that Drew and his cabinet doing that, that you like, man, or you, you would give some kudos to? <laughs> I, I thought, I thought, you know, someone asked me the question the other day, and I thought long and hard, you know. I, I, yeah, man, you know. Um, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. And I, you know, I, I looked at it, you know, I looked at, and I can say, I looked at the, uh, as 
the, the student uh, fees and so on. But I, I, someone sent me an invoice. So I'm, I'm, I'm. Sometimes you hear these things from him, and then you, you see the opposite in evidence. So you know, it, it's. I'm cautious because it's really hard. It's really hard to follow him. You know. Uh, okay, so really if, if there was, if there were, if there were ten things that you think they did bad last year, can you get up to? Five or half, fifty percent good or what? I can get perhaps a hundred percent because I'm I'm I'm, oh, wow. I'm 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 a stickler for for good for for uh, uh, correctness, you know. And he yeah, has, yeah, he, has yeah. he has failed us. He has really failed us big time, you know. I mean, look at the, the <laughs> yeah, look, at, look at the uh, the 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 CBI CBI data he promised, you know. You know, okay, concerning that, mm. um, I, I good, I good, you, I good, you throw a point out for me to get on. Mm. So my opinion concerning that is, you know, you know, recently they said that they have joined with some other islands there in the Caribbean. Three, seen. I think, three more islands at least. Yes, the OECS, yeah. With, with some type of an agreement with the CBI programs they're running in those islands, so. and to me, to me, maybe because of that arrangement. He's probably coming under some pressure to release this information from Sinkis and Sinkis Nevis and. But he has not. But he might be. He might be coming under pressure now because of that arrangement. That's what I'm saying. Oh. Because you know him, so that you know, in one month he's going to have something for you. Another month. Wow. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, 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 you sound off. You sound off on that clip, didn't you? Well, yes, but but he said that a couple of weeks ago. So I I thought his statement in parliament, <laughs> his statement in parliament, with a, with a big, was, uh, was covering that. He was gonna, bring, yeah. You thought you uh, thought that was gonna be the day, huh? Yeah. Well, okay. Well, perhaps I I interpreted Got you. I interpreted wrongly, but nonetheless, always good to hear, my brother. Always good to hear you. But anyway, anyway, real quick, man. Um, you know, you said that. Well, actually, I I asked about big lies. I think last time. Mm-hmm. So I really want to say, man, you, you delivered big lights tonight in a big way. It seems like <laughs> big lights, big lights. So, so I know, so I definitely know he's alive and kicking. He's he's quite capable, man. You know, he's big lights. Yeah, going yeah. Now, when when, when 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 we when we going to get him to put his name on the ballot, man? <laughs> well, he said that, and I support him that we we need an opposition. We always need an opposition. You know, I, I yeah, we sure do, man. You know, because it's, it's lacking, it's lacking across the narrows right now. Yeah, no, opposition is good for it's not, it's not, it's not, not, not good, not good for democracy. You know what I'm saying? Not at all, not at all, my brother, not at all. So thank you for delivering big lights tonight, man. At least I know he's alive and kicking. Okay, my brother. Yes, he is alive. Yes. And different than that, um, real quick before I get off, you know, when we look back in retrospect at Team Unity's performance during the uh, COVID, mm-hmm. you know, 46 deaths only. You know, we out here in the international scene, we was really rooting for Sinkis Nevis during that period. Mm-hmm. And if Team Unity didn't self-destruct like they did because of their egos and whatever else, the people them would have sure put them back if it was based on their performance during the COVID. And that's what I thought would have happened right in and after the COVID, their performance or whatever during COVID, right? But as time went on, we found out that they had these inner wranglings going on. Mm-hmm. And these guys' egos caused them to fall apart. You know what I'm saying? So some persons say that the government that's in now, they won by an offset goal or something like that. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the electorates, they, it seems like they got mad at the way in which the team unity fall apart. Oh. And they sure, they sure punish them. You know what I mean? Right. But now we have this new administration in. You know, I believe that and think that these guys should be looking forward than looking backwards. You know what I mean? Um, my advice to the advisors that's around the prime minister is, you know, in areas that he's not that knowledgeable in, with all the advisors he has, they should be advising this man properly, especially before he come to the media. You know what I mean? Because um, what I've observed about his response to this character movement question is he's asking for more data and more information when in fact this man has had traveled down to Guyana 
and went to those meetings, all of those other Caribbean heads of leaders was, were at. And they were mentioned that this free CARICOM movement didn't just drop out the sky yesterday or recently. This is something that's been ongoing for so long. So all of those advisors that he has around him, they have a wealth of knowledge about this stuff. And you know who those, you know who those advisors are. So when this man came out on that round table last week, I mean, that Thursday, I don't know if it was last week or the week before now, but when he came out and he made that response to that question or that statement that he need more data, this man should be more prepared for that question. He's lying. But I'll leave it I'll leave it there for now, man, and I'll let somebody else call him. You know what I mean? But his advisors got to step up and really give this man the best advice that they could do for that money that they're getting paid. And thanks a lot, man. I'll leave it there and have a good... Have a good night, man. Enjoy your good Friday tomorrow and the rest of your Easter weekend. Thank you, and you do the same as well, my brother. Uh, Thanks. I believe that he lied, though. Uh, let's go back to the lines. Uh, uh, in fact, when when the report came out from that meeting, uh, it, it, sa- it, 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 it it stated that all the CARICOM heads agreed except for three. I recall that report. Uh, Antigua Barbuda, Bahamas, who never were ever part of the CSME, and Haiti, based on this situation. Call it your life. Thank you for holding. Good evening, Mr. Leibert. Good evening, my dear brother, uh, Carl Brown. How about thou? And good evening to the listeners, home and abroad. Carl Brown here. Mr. Leibert, so. a question. Those ministers that left here last week and attended the that comrade big fiftieth birthday party, are we going to pay those ministers four hundred US for that night for partying for a comrade birthday party? I hope not. That that, uh, that couldn't be official business. <laughs> we, <laughs> I I I would not I I would not believe that because how you see all those comrades right mm-hmm. so many of them well many of them would have saved the money from last year but the question has to be asked are we going to pay those ministers four hundred US for that birthday party? party in celebration. Then the, the other thing, Mr. Leibert, have you heard or have any information and we are asking, if is, is it true that the CVI is going to become a statutory corporation very soon? That's the word on the street. That is what's coming to the grapevine. And the professors and students of the Coconut Tree University have picked up the show show that there are plans to make the CVI a statutory corporation. The university is still around? Uh, eh? That university yes, is still man, around? Eh? <laughs> yes, working very hard as usual. And Mr. Leibert, mm-hmm. news out of Casper. You know the new the contract that was given to the private company. You know, the workers, they have the, not even the amount. And you know, they're balling. They're saying that the mops them is too big and the, the mops them, sorry, the mops them is too heavy and the floor them is too big. The, too big. the new cleaners mm-hmm. to the private company the ladies are balling out. The mops them is too big and heavy, and the floor them is too big. And they're asking if it's all of that work and that much floor they have to mop. Now, the other thing, Mr. Leibert, I don't understand these ministers. You go out to these big CARICOM meetings. You know well ahead what the topics and what you are going to discuss. How is it that there is no discussion with your um, people in your country? Because 
what you are going to be discussing, okay, like the free movement. I mean, you're supposed to have some discussion with your people, informing your people what you all are going to discuss and hear from your people. You don't just give your commitment. Um, yes, I agree. Think it's me if agree. That's the prime minister agree. We here in agree. You have to come and hear from us. And then you could say, well, my people have decided yes or no, or give us some more time. You can then agree and then come talk about... Um, Looking for data. You going to bring um, people to come now and discuss to have to hear from NGOs and to hear from the citizens. No, that ain't how you do things. You know that going to affect your people. Because we don't ball in how many people from all over the Caribbean getting in here and taking up jobs. You know, you know that going to be the number one concern. But see how they're nice it up, Mr. Leibert. Oh, only those people with, with special skills. Well, Mr. Leibert... There is no skill in the Caribbean that think it's Navy seen have here. Every time they have projects doing here and you work with these people, the people ask the question, well, why you all bring us here and you all have this skill here and you all are even doing it better than us? I have worked on projects and people who they brought in here tell us that why you all bring us here and you all have this skill here? Yes, my So those, those are going to be some very serious concerns. There was supposed to be discussion with your people. The other thing is, our Prime Minister has not discussed anything to our people yet concerning same-sex marriages. And that is since last year. We still are waiting our Prime Minister to come and have some discussion with us. Because you know the European Union has made it clear that they are requesting of these Caribbean countries to get on board with that. We need to hear from our Prime Minister. We need discussion. We need debate. You can't just go and sign and say, think it's me, we agree. You agree, not us. True. True. And we need to hear how many passports has Dr. Drew signed off on since he has been Prime Minister and what is the total number of months of passports we have over out there and the top five countries that are receiving our passports or even the top ten. I gone, Mr. Leibert. Yes, thank you very much for your clarion call for transparency that's all we're asking for uh transparency and my short talk family as we wind down tonight's programming and we listen to our prime minister july on the issues as we raise I'll perhaps take this and make this my penultimate call if this caller can be guided by brevity. Call your life. Yeah, Patrick. So I got you know, but can counterfeit money has no value. Joe is a counterfeit leader and his cabal they are counterfeit. That is a board pick me on me ear and tell me that. They get the information from right in the among them, even the devil guy friend. That the reason why this Trinidad man want to come here, come, sm come build smart house, is because somebody in their wife. Hey, uh, let, let's, let, 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 let's not go there. Let's not go there. Let's not go there. Let's not go there at all tonight. Nah, uh. let, let, oh, don't go by the house tonight. No, don't go by the, nobody's wife here uh, tonight, please. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, 
talking about the wife. Okay. No, 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 please, yeah. Well, I understand that the reason why somebody from here ain't going to get the job to build it is because of relationship with somebody that's in another country. That sound better? Okay, well, thanks a lot for your information, my dear brother, and have yourself uh, a wonderful Good Friday and a wonderful Easter weekend. Uh, okay, they want to send... Good Friday, they're going to be looking every day for me. Okay, well, yeah. enjoy it nonetheless, my straight dog family. But anyway, things can come good because they start wrong and they stop to fix it. And so they're going to end up wrong because they're doing a load of wrong. Good night, Patches. Good night, my dear brother, culture. And have yourself a wonderful weekend. That's how we're going to end it uh, tonight, my straight dog family. Uh, on that note, as we wrap tonight's programming uh, and we reflect on our discussion for tonight and there's some good news as well I, I, I should have uh, revealed because uh, I, I remember speaking to about the the uh, Kion as being the epicenter uh, for quality and I understand uh, that the the Bureau of Standards have in fact completed the analysis of their findings as it as they relate to equality at the Keon High School and I am reliably informed that there are no issues as it relates to the equality over there at the Keon High School. We are still following though the quality of the the water that was found uh, over there in Keon and uh, at some stage at some stage we are going to to address that we, we're going to continue rather I should say we're going to continue to address uh, the issue of quality as it relates to to the water that uh, was found over there in Keon and I I did not address it tonight because I wanted to 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 ensure we spend more time on that issue of uh, water quality. We have not forgotten it. I can assure you uh, for the, that individual who sent me a uh, reminder. I have not forgotten the issue of the quality of the water apparently found. I am. I know that that. We heard this just a few days ago uh, from the Inspector of Quality in the Water Services Department who said this. What challenges have you encountered? Well, still to perform certain aspects of the job. Like I said, we refurbish in the lab. So that is one major challenge. We have to rely heavily on outside, like for instance, the Bureau of Standards or the help, the environment help to do certain stuff for us that we could have done instantly and probably get the results instantly. Mm -hmm. So just waiting at that time sometimes to get back results could be critical. Mm -hmm. You know, so if we were able to perform certain tests on our own instantly, then we could have them to verify that what we found is or is not. But the water services department cannot do the tests on their own. The lab has been done for quite some time, but you may. the inspector of quality mentioned the Bureau of Standards. But we still ask the question, why haven't the water services department, the manager and water engineer, uh, Kwamil Williams, the permanent secretary, uh, Mr. Lloyd, and the SOCA engineer, the minister, why have they, have they not approached the Bureau of Standards, which is something normal to do the tests for the water? But we'll deal with that at some other time. But as we wind up tonight's programming, as I said, some good news out of the Keon uh, High School that the air quality, uh, there's no issues with the air quality uh, tests that were done at the school. That's the information that has have come to hand. 
and we just await information on the water quality tests uh, still from Keon as well. But as we wrap tonight's program, and for those who may have joined me late, uh, we discussed tonight our thesis. Our focus was on our thesis, which we titled, July Doesn't Know His Acres From His Nago. And my straight dog family, that item uh, we reflected on derived from the fact or from the statement made by July in the National Assembly on Tuesday. And while he built up everybody that after this deep review, deep internal review, he would have had the data, he fooled us once again, my straight dog family, when he said this. For example, the CBI program, we know that one of the major projects that was approved under the previous administration was a prison project, Madam Speaker. A prison was approved. And 5,500 citizenships, or shears rather, Madam Speaker, shears, as it was called then, shears, Still was called. used for that project. It means, therefore, that 5,500 main applicants, if they were to invest in the prison project, can apply for citizenship. And if they would have passed the due diligence and other screening procedures, can access our passport. But Madam Speaker, that is just the main applicants. If you have a family of four, that is a single share. With a family of four, that's four times 5,500 passports, Madam Speaker. Do a calculation. I'm asking the people of this country. I've been asked for the numbers. And even members from the other side who know very well what the numbers are. They have asked that the numbers be given, but we took a deep dive, and now we are ready to say what happened with that project. So if you were to multiply 5,500 by 4, and the mathematicians are here, I am sure you'll get well over what? 20,000? Yes. 20,000. What is the population of St. Kitts and Nevis, Madam Speaker? About 50, 55,000 on a good day. And just a one project, Madam Speaker, a prison project, the previous administration allowed access to a number of passports, which is about half of the population of St. Kitts and Nevis. And my straight talk family, his deep dive <laughs> brought nothing absolutely nothing because in 2018 the third prime minister provided this information last time i had reported that under the, the program we were advised by the canadian bank note who manages our passport the 10,777 had been issued at the end of december 2015 and we have the revised information from the banknote which says that up to 2015, really, the figure should have been 12,496. And the total number of CBI passport now issued stands at 16,544. That was 2018. So why can July provide the statistics in 2024 after doing an internal review and a deep dive. My straight dog family, they went to pass a bill about a productivity council. 
but the low productivity within the cabinet of ministers has had significant negative consequences for this government, its citizens, and residents. July and his cabinet raised their salaries by 35%, but the minimum wage by 19%. They gave themselves $7,000 and more and gave poor people $70 to great public satisfaction. But people are balling. Let's check a talk family. They are balling. And this form advisor reminded us of that. Right now I believe the Prime Minister listen to me. Me and advise anymore. You don't follow me. But listen to me carefully. Right now you need a, a cabinet reshuffle. Everything needs to shuffle up. Because let me tell you something. My experience around these 68 square miles my experience in Nevis is that everybody are born. The labor people are born more than everybody else. Things not going well. Things not going well. But all I'm saying, things not going well. If the labor people are born more than the ordinary people, something is wrong. If the ordinary people is not growing as much as the labor people, something is wrong. We're not, we're, we're not the good. Saying it's Nevis is in a mess. The country is not going in any direction. We're spinning like top in mud. We're spinning like top in mud. St. Kitts is in a mess. Quack personnel in public organizations have adversely affected our socio-economic development. When our Prime Minister July speaks, He's so irresponsible as a medical doctor. It is sad when he says things like this. The lifting of all COVID-related travel restrictions in August 2022. And I will say it was August 7th, 2022, a Sunday night at our Marriott Hotel where that decision was made with all of the relevant um, persons in the room, including the CMO and others. I will say it again. The lifting of all COVID-related travel restrictions in August 2022 sparked a strong rebound in the tourism sector and across the economy, end of quote. IMF stating it. Remember, Madam Speaker, I said to the people that a travesty had been committed when the then administration refused to open the economy fully by removing the unnecessary restrictions. Had we not done that, the economy would have lagged even more. And because we took so long to open up the country and remove the restrictions, the economy economy lagged. Reports will show that the St. Kitts Nevis economy recovered almost the slowest in the OECS as a result of this. All of the other countries had removed their restrictions and they were open for business to the point where some countries had higher numbers in terms of their tourism numbers than even 2019. Madam Speaker, however, St. Kitts and Nevis lagged because the previous administration refused to open up the country and we are still feeling some of the effect from that. Had the economy been opened up as others, or at the same time as others, we would have recovered since by the end of 2023. My talk family, you said the economy moved the slowest. But is Drew lie aware that our death rate in the entire world was the lowest? Is Drew lie aware that Latin America and the Caribbean had the highest number of reported COVID-19 deaths of any region, hear me, any region in the world? There are the statistics, July. 1.8 1.8 million by December last year. Even though the region makes 
up just over 8.4 percent of the world's population reported like 30 percent or more of deaths in the world and all july talks about is the Bretton woods institutions why does he look get out of the imf box and look at sources like ecla and other sources Read social panor- panor- panorama of Latin America. You will find a summary. That reason I quote the effects of the pandemic amount to the most serious economic contraction of the past 120 years experienced by the region and a steady deterioration of the social development process. Yes, you took 5,000 people of the pap in spite of that information dr Jew, you spoke about the internal review as we close you said he was serious about the ipl yet your chairman of your transition team the chairman of the transition team was one of the persons hauled before the magistrate's court to answer a charge relating to his non-declaration or non-compliance with the IPL. That's the charge in the magistrate's court. Just a few weeks ago, the chairman of the, your board of governors, I understand that he's resigned, but we are looking to see whether he'll resign and go on the same board. We're looking for that, my straight dog family. But we can only come to one conclusion tonight. My friend Big Lice would say that he doesn't know, he meaning Jew, July. July doesn't know his ass from his elbow. As your host, I didn't say that. I will say that July doesn't know his acres from his nalgo. That's my story tonight, my straight dog family. And I'm not going to change it. I want to thank all of you who joined me tonight. Those of you who listened. There are those who sent emails. There are those of you who called. I just want to remind you that you are the ones who make straight talk. And for that reason, I say a big, big thank you. I thank Almighty God for guiding our conversation tonight. As always, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow down at Black Rock, the PLP kite flying function uh, starts tomorrow uh, or comes on tomorrow as per usual, my Street Talk family. We see you there tomorrow. But remember, have yourselves a wonderful weekend. We won't see you on Monday because Monday is a holiday, so we'll take a break for Easter Monday as well. Have your Johnny Cake, have your Saltfish, have your Conky, and all that goes or comes with Easter. And remember, whatever your mind conceive, that you will achieve. So until we connect next week, Thursday, God's will, my straight dog family, be good to yourselves and to all whom you meet. And remember that whatever your mind conceive, that you will achieve. But first of all, you've got to believe. So when you wake in the morning, thank God for the morning light. Thank him for taking you through the night. And my straight dog family, keep moving on. Bye-bye until we connect. Hear me out. Next week, Thursday. So have yourselves a wonderful weekend for the Easter. And be good to all whom you meet. Bye-bye until we connect on Thursday. In a week in the morning, I thank God for the morning light. Give you thanks and praises for taking me safely through the night. For the rest of food and love. And for my mother's breath of life That's got me here So whatever my mind can see That I will achieve You better believe Because I do the things I should Be to my
my brethren, God.